Greetings, everyone. In this, the XYZ Excel Sales Report Project, you will create a spreadsheet that utilizes many Excel features, such as tables, formulas, functions, cell formats, pie charts, and by charts. There is a lot going on in this project. A copy of all the instructions is available to download from program-info.net slash intro to CIS slash Excel's sales report dot PDF. Make sure you watch the capitalization. The XYZ company has several salespeople who go out and sell the company's products. People earn commissions for each sale and a bonus if they have exceeded their individual goal. Different people have different goals depending on their experience and the item being sold. We have been asked to create a report with graphs that show the progress of each person and information on how well the entire team is doing. Once the sales report form has been developed, only the names of the employees, their goals, and the number of items sold are to be entered. Everything else will be computed as the goals and sales data is entered or changed. This way, you will be able to enter new data the next month and have the spreadsheet automatically recompute commissions, bonuses, totals, and both charts. The company also wants to know the total of all commissions, bonuses, and the total of both. A pie chart and column chart is to give a visual display of the units sold and the total paid to each individual person. Make sure your name and the date the report is generated is displayed in the upper right corner of the spreadsheet. 1. Enter the spreadsheet title into cell A1. Include the company name and the words sales report. XYZ Company Sales Report. You can choose a different name if you wish. Set the font size 20 and style to bold. Merge cells A1 through G2. Use the mouse to select A1 while holding the mouse button. Scroll over and down to G2 and release the mouse. Click the Merge selection on the ribbon. Based on your internet connection, Excel 365 may be slow in processing your commands. 3. Enter your name into cell H1. 4. Enter the function equal today open close parentheses in cell H2 and press the enter key. Don't forget to type the equal sign. 5. The date can be displayed in many different formats. To get a date format that will fit in the cell, right click on the date and select the number format. Then select Date, pick 3 slash 14 slash 2012 and click OK. Cell F4, set to Commission Rate, Rate Justified. Cell F5, set to 2.5. Numeric values are Rate Justified by default. Cell G4, set to Bonus Rate, Rate Justified. Cell G5, set to 10. Set the Commission Rate and Bonus Rate values to Currency Format. This will be similar to how the date format was set. Select both cells F5 and G5, right click, select number format, then currency with two decimal places. Starting at cell A6, enter salesperson, goal, sold, percent of goal, met goal, commission, bonus, and total. As you enter the data for each cell, you can use the tab key to move to the next cell. You may notice that there is not enough room in cell A6 for the word salesperson, so let's change the column widths. Use the mouse to select columns A through H and right click. Set column width 11.4. Click on the 6 that identifies the row number. Click the bold format selection, then set text to center. Starting at cell A7, Enter the names of the employees. Press the Enter key after each name to move down to the next row. You can use these names or select your own set of names. Jones, Wynn, Chavez, Matthews, Smith, Smithers, and Simpsons. Also enter the values for each employee for their goal and the number of items sold. Starting at cell B15, enter the labels for total, average, high, and low. Use the border tool to draw a border inside and around the table. Use the mouse to select the cells that are part of the table. Select the border tool. 1. Select the lines for both inside and outside. 2. Select the thick lines around the outside. Now is a good time to save your work.
There is nothing more frustrating with computers than working hard and losing your work. I recommend saving several times as you progress through the project. Go up to the File menu and select Save As. Either save a copy online if you have a cloud account or download it to your computer. Locate the formula bar. The formula bar shows what's actually inside the cell. As we code this spreadsheet, we will put the formula equal C7 divided by B7 in cell D7, but the computed value of 94% is what will be displayed. You can always click a cell and look at the formula bar to see what is actually inside the cell. Enter the formula to compute the percent of gold for the first employee. Click the cell D7 and enter equal C7 divided by B7. The easy way to enter the formula is to click cell D7, enter the equal sign, click cell C7, type the slash for division, then click cell B7. What makes this easier is that you don't need to visually determine the cell address by row and column. Just click it. The goal I entered for the first employee was 480 and the number sold was only 450. The first employee only met 94% of the goal. To copy the formula down for the rest of the employees, make sure that cell D7 is selected and move the mouse to the lower right edge of cell D7. You should see the cursor change from a thick plus sign to a very thin plus sign. Use the mouse to grab the thin plus sign and drag it down to D13 to copy the formula for the rest of the employees. Oh no! The border on the bottom of D13 was also copied down and became a thin line instead of a thick line. Oh well, same thing will probably happen when I use formulas and functions for the rest of the table and copy them down. I'll just wait until I have finished putting things in the table and fix the outside border then. Discussion. Logical if function. Excel has a whole collection of functions that can be used on a spreadsheet. A function is entered using its name. In this case, if, followed by an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. Parameters for the function can be placed inside the parentheses. I am going to use the if function to determine whether or not an employee met the sales goal. The goal has been met if the number of units sold is greater or equal to the goal. We could either compare the number sold to the goal or we could see if the percent of goal is greater or equal to 1. Remember that the value of 1.0 will be displayed as 100% if the cell is formatted to display percentage. I am using the if function to compare units sold to the goal and display yes if the goal was met or no if the goal was not met. If instead you want to compare the percent of goal to 1.0, you can do that, but I'm not showing it here. The if function has three parameters. One, a test that must evaluate to true or false. Two, the data that is to be placed in the cell if the test evaluates to true. And three, the data that is to be placed in the cell if the test evaluates to false. Each part of the if function is separated by a comma character. Text inside of quotes will be displayed as text. Text not in quotes, such as A5, will refer to a cell address. The logical if function can be used to examine the goal and sold fields and display the word yes if the goal was met or display no if the goal was not met. Locate the insert function button, F sub X. Select cell E7 to compute met goal for the first employee. Click the F of X button. If you are lucky, you will see the if function as one of the options in the commonly used list. If you don't see it there, then you will find it by choosing the logical category from the drop-down menu. Select if and click OK. You are ready to enter the logical test. The cell C7, which has the amount sold for the first employee, enter the characters greater equal to represent greater or equal to, then click cell B7 for the first employee's goal. Press the comma 
character to advance to the next part of the if statement. Type quote, yes, quote, and then a comma. Don't forget the quotation marks. And now for the third part of the if. Type quote, no, quote, and press the enter key. Since the data I used for the first employee has not met the goal, the word no should be displayed. Make sure that you have the E7 cell for the first employee's met goal selected. Move to the lower right corner to see the small plus sign. Grab the small plus sign with the mouse and drag it down to copy the met goal formula for the rest of the employees. Discussion. Relative and absolute cell references. The people in the sales department are to be paid a commission of $2.50 for each item that they have sold. Cell F5 contains the current commission rate of $2.50. The president of the company would like to change the commission by only changing the value in cell F5. This means that the commission for each employee must be calculated based on the value in cell F5. Cell C7 contains the amount sold, and F5 contains the commission rate. The commission for Jones and F8 can be computed with the formula equal C7 times F5. It would be nice to copy the formula down to compute the commission for each employee, but a problem arises when copying down the formula. For example, when the formula is copied down for win, the formula modifies itself as it is copied down. When equal C7 times F5 is copied down from Jones to win, it becomes equal C8 times F6. The problem is that the commission rate is in F5, but the F5 became F6 when the formula was copied down. F6 does not point to the commission rate. The formula for win should be equal C8 times D5. We need to tell Excel not to modify the cell address D5 when it gets copied. Relative reference. A relative address gets modified when a formula is copied to a new cell. Absolute reference. An absolute address does not get modified when copied. Use the dollar sign in front of the row or cell address to specify an absolute address. Use this formula for Jones equals C7 times dollar sign D dollar sign 5. The C7 is relative and it will get modified to specify the sales for each employee as the formula is copied down. But the dollar sign D dollar sign 5 will always refer to the commission rate in cell D5. Now the formula can be copied down for all employees. Select cell F7 to compute the commission for Jones. Enter the formula equal C7 times $F $5. Hint, click the actual cells instead of typing the cell address. With cells of 450 units and a rate of $2.50 per unit, Jones should receive $1,125 commission. Right click cell D5 and select the format cells menu option. Select number format then currency with two decimal places to get the dollar sign and two decimals. Use the mouse to grab the small plus sign on the lower right corner of cell F7 and drag it down to cell F13. This will copy the formula to compute commission for all employees. Employees get a $10 bonus for each item sold that is over their goal. If they don't make their sales goal, then no bonus. It sounds like we need another if function. Let's start out computing any possible bonus for Jones, the first employee. Select a cell G7 that holds Jones's bonus. The if function that goes here is a little more complicated than the if used when computing met goal. Here it is. Equal if open parentheses C7 greater than or equal to B7 comma open parentheses, C7 minus B7, close parentheses, times dollar G, dollar five, comma, zero, close parentheses. Let's look closer at the if statement. Remember that it has three parts. Part one is the test. Part two contains the value used when the test passes. Part three contains the value used when the test fails. Make sure to use a comma between the parts of the if function. 
The test is the easy part. It is the same as the test used for the MET goal. Part 1 of the IF function is C7 greater than or equal to B7. It checks to see if the items sold are greater or equal to the goal. Part 2 of the IF statement is what happens if the test is true. Open parentheses C7 minus B7 close parentheses times dollar $G dollar $5. Compute the number of items sold that is over the goal. C7 minus B7. This needs to be put inside parentheses because addition and subtraction have a lower priority in a math expression than multiplication or division. Therefore, multiply the number of items over the goal by the goal rate in $G $5. The dollar signs are used to declare an absolute cell reference so that it won't change when the formula is copied down. Part 3 of the IF statement is what happens if the test fails. If the employee did not sell more than the goal, the bonus amount is zero. After computing the bonus for the first employee, set its format to currency and copy it down for the rest of the employees. Right click cell G7 and select the format cells menu option. Select number format, then currency with two decimal places to get the dollar sign and two decimals. Use the mouse to grab the small plus sign on the lower right corner of cell G7 and drag it down to cell G13. This will copy the bonus computation down for all employees. Finally, here comes an easy one. Although you could set the total paid to the first employee to commission plus bonus using the formula equal F7 plus G7, let's use Excel's auto sum function. We will need it later. An easier way to compute the total, also called the sum, is to first select the cell that is to receive the total. I'm selecting H7, which is the cell that holds the total for the first employee. Then click the Sigma button near the upper right corner of Excel. Excel likes to guess which values to be included in the sum. It looks like I lucked out this time. Excel chose the two cells to the left because they contained numeric values. I could have used the mouse to select a group of cells if I wanted something different than what Excel's best guess was. Press the Enter key and you should see the value 1125 showing as the first employee's total. After computing the total for the first employee, set its format to currency and copy it down for the rest of the employees. Right click cell H7 and select the format cells menu option. Select number format, then currency with two decimal places to get the dollar sign and two decimals. Move the mouse to grab the small plus sign on the lower right corner of cell H7 and drag it down to cells H13. This will copy the total computation down for all employees. Now that the data in the table is complete, we can fix the outside border lines on the table. Use the mouse to select all the cells in the table. Click the border tool and select the thick outside border. Computing the total sold for all employees is similar to how the total paid was computed for each individual employee. Select cell C15, which is to the right of the label Total. Click the Sigma button near the upper right corner of Excel. Excel tries to guess which values to be included in the sum. It looks like I lucked out again. Excel chose all the numeric cells above C15. Press the Enter key and you should see the value 4,648 as the total number of items sold by all employees. Computing the average sold for all employees is just a little bit more complicated than computing the total items sold. Select cell C16, which is to the right of the label Average. The button for the Sigma symbol provides a gateway for Excel's entire collection of functions. Click the down arrow next to the Sigma symbol, and the drop-down menu displays the most commonly used functions. Lucky for me, Average happens to be one of them. If Average was not on the list, I would have needed to click the More Functions at the bottom of the menu list. When I click Average, Excel tries to guess which values to be averaged. 
Unfortunately, it picked the nearest set of numeric values, which happens to be right above C16, which is the total sold for all employees, then stops when it sees an empty cell in C14. To get the average of items sold for all employees, use the mouse to select a block of cells from C7 to C13 and press the Enter key. For the data that I used, it should display 664. Perform the same sequence of steps to get the high and low values for the items sold. Select the max function to get the high value and min to get the low value. Don't forget to use the mouse to select the block of cells for all employees. You can center the data for total average high and low to make the spreadsheet look nice. Excel makes it easy to create charts. All you need to do is select the data then select the type of chart you want. After the chart has been created, you can customize it as you wish. We need to select the block of cells that contain the employee names and the block of cells that contain the number of items sold. First, select a block of cells starting with the heading Salesperson in cell A6. Move the mouse to A6, hold the mouse button down, and move the mouse down to the last employee in cell A13 and release the mouse. Move the mouse over to C6 that holds the word sold. Important! In order to get multiple selections, hold down the control key on a Microsoft Windows system or the command key on Mac OS. Then hold down the mouse button as you scroll down to C13 while selecting the counts of items sold for all employees. Now you can click insert on the top menu bar and then click the button for a pie chart. Use the mouse to resize the pie chart by grabbing a corner of the chart and moving it to the size you want. Use the mouse to move the chart to a new position on the spreadsheet by grabbing an empty part of the chart and moving it to a new location. Inserting the column chart is similar to inserting the pie chart. However, this time you need to select both the cells that contain employee names and the cells that show their total amount paid. First, select a block of cells starting with the heading Salesperson in cell A6. Move the mouse to A6, hold the mouse button down, and move the mouse down to the last employee in cell A13 and release the mouse. Move the mouse over to cell H6 that holds the word Total. Hold down the Control key on a Microsoft Windows system or the Command key on Mac OS. Then you can hold down the mouse button as you scroll down to H13 while selecting the totals paid to all employees. Now you can click Insert on the top menu bar and then click the button for a column chart. Use the mouse to resize the column chart by grabbing a corner of the chart and moving it to the size you want. Move the mouse to move the chart to a new position on the spreadsheet by grabbing an empty part of the chart and moving it to a new location. Grid lines that outline each cell are useful when creating the spreadsheet but can be annoying when sharing for other people to look at. Be sure to save the spreadsheet after all this hard work. Here is the scoring rubric of the Excel sales report. There were many things presented in this project. I hope you really enjoyed it and learned a lot about Excel. Bye for now.